Hi friends, I'm Madhavta from Easy Approach and in this video we are going to understand and implement one of the most famous state managements in Flutter that is Mobex. So let's get started. The Mobex state management primarily works on the reactive programming concept. So before going into the Mobex, let's quickly talk about reactive programming and I will try to keep it as simple as possible. Reactive programming is programming with asynchronous data stream and if you don't have the idea of a stream then you can think it as a logical path from where the data is keep on traveling. The data stream in reactive world acts as the spine of the application and the part of the application that is concerned about that data listen to the data coming from the stream and it shows some reaction accordingly upon observing data coming from the stream. So in short, in reactive programming, application listen to the data in a stream and it shows the reaction accordingly. And that is why we call it reactive programming. Now let's talk about Mobex terminologies. The very first thing is observable. In Mobex, observable is any data that can be changed. For an instance, it can be number of likes on some posts because that's always changeable. So it's always available to be observed for the changes in it. Now let's talk about the second thing which is action. In Mobex, any event that triggers the change in the value of observable is called action. Say, again we have the like functionality and if some user taps on the like button, this would change the value of observable from 1 to 2. So such type of events in Mobex are called action. Now at the last we have reaction. As you know for every action there's a reaction. Now after the action has been performed and the change is made in the observable, the action we take in return is called reaction. For an instance, when the user would tap on the like button, it would change the value of observable from 1 to 2. And because of this, the UI will react to it and the UI will also be changed to show the latest result. And this change is what we are calling reaction. Now, as we have covered the terminologies of Mobex, now let's talk about the flow of it. Suppose an application with the same like functionality and there's a counter for number of likes that is observable because this can be changed anytime and this like text widget is observer and it's observing what? It's observing the observable that is number of like because this can be changed. Now say the user taps on the like button that is action and it triggers the data change in the value of observable from 1 to 2. And in the reaction, the UI will get re-rendered. So in Mobex, whenever there is some change in the observable, the UI will also get changed. So this is how Mobex works. Now as we have covered the essentials of Mobex, now we can start implementing the Mobex. So now we are going to implement Mobex and I'm gonna make the counter application. I know you may think that it's pretty simple thing. But in order to achieve something big, we gotta take a small steps. And I'm here to give you a little push so that it can help you to become an expert. So anyways, let's move forward. So first of all, let's see what we have coded so far to save the time. Here we have simple counter application. It's basically the default application. I've just uh, given here a constant a string value zero, but we will get it in the future from Mobex. And in the on press, we have nothing, it's just an empty function. And now, uh, for implementing Mobex, we have to add, uh, we have to install two dependencies for the Mobex support. So here this is. So we have to use these two dependencies. And after the Cupertino icons, you can just paste these two. And you have to click on this packages get, this would install uh, these two dependencies and then we can use them. Now as we have installed the dependencies, first of all we are going to make Mobex a store for this counter feature. In Mobex, the store is a class where we store related observables and the actions 
that can be taken on those observables. So I'm just going to make a clause inside the lib. And you can give any name like uh, counter dot dot. So just uh, define the clause and you can give any name like counter. And first of all, we have to define the observable inside this clause. So this should be the value of the counter because this can be changed. So we are going to make it observable. So for making an observable, you have to write observable. And you can see it's from mobex.dart. So just hit enter. And you can give any name to the observable like counter. And you have to initialize it with the initial value. So you can just give here a zero. And now we have to define action in this store. The action that can change the value of this counter observable. So in our case, definitely there's just one action that can change the value of counter. So that's the increment action. So whenever the user would tap on this floating action button, this would start the increment action. So we got to define the increment action in our store. So first of all, you have to declare the action and make sure you included the right one. Uh, it's from the mobex dot dot because there is uh, another action from some other library. So make sure you included the right one and you have to write the name of the action. So I'm just giving the name increment and I'm going to define this action inside the constructor of this class. So inside the counter. So for initializing the action, you have to write again action and inside it, you have to give the function. So what, whatever you would write inside this action would be executed whenever this action would be taken. So I'm just uh, giving here counter dot value. So for getting the value from the observable, you have to use dot value and I'm just going to increment this. So this is how you can uh, declare an action and how you can define the function inside the action that would be taken. Uh, whenever the action would be performed. And now as we have completed our store, now let's connect our Mobex store just that we have just made this counter store to the main dot dot so that we can show the counter and the increment uh, functionality on the screen. So for connecting the store, what you have to do, you have to make the instance of the store that we have just made. So we have made the counter store. So just write here counter. And you have to give some name and let's initialize it. And now this is actually the place where we have to observe the changing in the observable value. So whenever you have to observe some changes in the observable, you have to use their observer widget that's from the Mobex. So here it is the observer widget and inside it we have builder. So you have to give your context and inside it, you have to return the widget uh, that you want to uh, show on the screen and you have to, uh, you have to observe something from the store as well. So here we have to observe uh, the observable from the counter store. So we can access now using counter dot counter dot value. So this is how you can access the value of the observable. And now let's call the action of increment inside the on press. So you can call it by using first the store, the counter store. And inside it, we have an increment action and you can call it by using call function. So as we have created the store and we have connected the store as well with the UI. Now let's run the application. Um, but but uh, I have uh, I have done here a small mistake. We have to wrap it. We cannot give the integer directly into a tax widget. So we have to wrap it inside the inverted commas. And you have to do something like this. And now let's run the application. So now the application is restarted and now let's uh, tap on this button. This should increase the value of counter. 
So you can see the value is being the value is increasing actually. So this is how you can implement the MOBEX. So we have just made a store and here it is and we have just connected the store with this UI and that's how the MOBEX is working. But there's, there's a thing that uh, we have to discuss. Whenever we have to make a store, we have to initialize observable and we have to initialize the action in this way. So we have to repeat a lot of code and we have here taken a small example but in most of the cases a store are big and they have a lot of observables and they have a lot of actions and this can be horrific if we write this much of code just for defining the action and observable. So there must be some shortcut for defining the action and observable so that we can write the store in more better way and yes we do have. For this we have some packages and here they are the mobex code generator and the build runner so we have to install these packages in our application but we will install these dependencies under dev dependencies as these dependencies will only be used at the time of development for just code generation not at the time of deployment so whenever we have dependencies that are used at the time of development, we put them inside dev dependencies. And whenever we have dependencies that are run and that are used at the time of deployment, we put them inside just dependencies. And this Mobex code generator and build runner will just generate the code for us at the time of development. We don't need to generate the code when the application is live. So that is why we are putting these two here. Now let's uh, click on this packages get this would install the package and now we have to do some few changes here to make it more readable and more easy to write stores. Now the package that we have just installed will allow us to use the annotation for defining the count for defining the observable and action. So this would make the code more readable and more easier to write for a big store. For this we have to do some few changes first. First of all we have to use a store mixin from the mobex and we have to make this clause abstract. And now what we can do for defining the observer we can use now the observer sorry the observable annotation and you can just make it integer variable of counter that would be initially zero so this is how you can define the observable and for the action we don't have to write all these code we can just remove everything and we can write here annotation for the action and inside it we can just make a simple function of increment and we can just increase the counter value so this is it just this code and you can you can get the same functionality that uh, we were having uh, with the code that we wrote earlier and now in order to make it run we have to write couple of lines more so first of all we have to include a file that's not right now available so we will generate that file by using code generator that we have added in dev dependency so the file name would be uh, it should be same as your file name here so you can see here it's lowercase counter so you have to write here the same name counter and you have to write here g as this would be the generated file and you have to write here dot dot so this would be the file that would be generated by mobex code generator so make sure it follows the same uh, case uh, like your file name and it follows the same name that your file name have and now as this is an abstract clause so this cannot be used directly so in order to make it work we have to write some weird code so firstly we have to write here a class and we have to give some name and this is the name by which we will access the store of this counter in the UI so you have to give some name and now you have to initialize this with the abstract clause that we have just made here and we have to use the mixin as well that will be generated by the mobex code generator inside this counter.g.dot.file. So the name would be same as the counter store, but it 
it would have underscore and dollar sign before the name of the class before the name of the mixin now we have done everything and now we are good to generate this counter.g dot file in which this mixin will be defined as well so in order to generate uh, the file we have to use this command in the terminal so you can just use this command and you have to go in the terminal just paste this thing and you have to hit enter and make sure before running this command you have followed all the instructions you have to include this file if you haven't include this file this the file will not be generated you have to write this line as well and the file name should be same as your file but it should have dot g dot dot as extension and make sure you follow the same uh, lower case as you have defined as we have defined in the class so this would take some time so you can see it's uh, generated two output files and you can see uh, somewhere uh, we have now the counter dot g dot dot uh, uh, counter dot g dot dot and now there is no error in this and we have this mix in as well it's not showing some error so it means we have uh, completely we have successfully uh, included all these things and now you can see this uh, store is looking quite readable and we're very easy because we have not uh, write uh, so many code uh, for defining the action and for defining the observable so, so this is how you can minimize the number of lines and you can make your um, your code in mobex more readable by using the Mo Mo mobex generator and now we have to do some changes in the in the in the ui as well first of all we have to change the name because now we can access the counter store by using counter store and we have to use here counter store as well and to access the observable we can simply use um what we have we have counter we can use counter and for calling the action we have again the yeah we have this increment now let's run the application so it should show the same result that we could see in the last build so the application is restarted and now let's run this file you can see the counter is set it to zero again so you can see it's, it's still working and it's still showing the same result so by using the mobex code generator so what we have achieved uh, we have uh, minimized the number of lines and we have made it the code more easy to read and you can see here the the generated file here as well now you can see it here so this is it from this video in this video we have understand the mobags and we have implemented it as well i know it was a common example and a very small example but what i prefer is to take small steps in order to achieve something big because when you take small steps in order to achieve something big you ultimately get to the place where you want to be so this is it from this video if you like the video please give a big thumbs up and i want to tell you a fact that my number of views are more than my number of subscribers so that's so bad that you haven't subscribed my channel please 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 i request please because i want to grow my channel i have been making videos for you since an year so please share share my videos and subscribe my channel as well and make me grow the easy approach so this is it from this video if you like the video please give a big thumbs up subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it and share the videos with those who want to learn Flutter with easy approach. So thank you for watching.